Hello, everyone. Can you guys see me and hear me? Good morning. Yes. Good, Good morning. morning. Perfect. Good morning. Perfect. I should we start and wait for a little bit more? Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and start right now so we can cover all the material. So my name is Mahad Adu. I'm a broker associate with Keller William. I have been uh, a realtor since 2003, completely active in 2007, 2008, when everything went down. And I moved to Keller Williams in 2015. Um, today, we're going to be talking about finding seller leads. I will cover all the material. Um, I'll go slide by slide. And if you have any questions, we'll keep it till the end so we can have a little Q&A at the end of the session. So I'm going to go dive in right away. OK, two things every agent would be doing, or a successful agent would be doing every day. Um, you guys see all those pop up on my screen? OK. Uh, yes. growing, OK, sorry about that. Uh, either you grow your business or you run your business. You're going to do two things every day. If you are new in the business, you're going to start to lead generate for buyers and sellers because that's your uh, backbone of the business. And if you have some business already, you're still running your business by doing everything uh, as a daily uh, activities to keep your business, run it and cultivate for more. So, when we understand the motivation, the motivation will be basically finding leads, generating leads, um, growing your business. So you have to have specific tasks every day. I'm just going to go by. First thing is calling, prospecting. So when you call and prospect, you have to watch for all the rules, the compliance, because it takes only one person to complain to your broker, you're not in a good space at this point. So you need to subscribe to the registry. Uh, if you see their phone number is on the list that you're calling, do not call them. Update your call, your call list regularly about every 30 days. If you see the numbers that you have is on do not call list, you take it off your list. Um, Knowing your laws, it will protect you. As a professional, uh, you should not have something small like this um, stay in your career. So people can complain about you. Now we have a lot of social media. They can go on Yelp. They can go on Instagram or your page on Facebook, and they can be very negative. So watch out not to. There's a lot of people already think so negative about realtors. Uh, so you need to check before you call. And if somebody tell you do not call, you just be apologetic and very nice. And just even if they're mean, do not even go back and forth with them. Just honor their, your, their request and go on. Finding sellers leads. Your database. So we always say if you're beginning in your career, your database will be your sphere of influence. It could be your neighbor. If, you, if you're still working, have a second job, it could be your colleagues. If you are working only as a real estate agent, it could be your former colleagues. It could be your doctors. It could be your bankers. So all of those people are in your database. And then you have to tackle them all the time. You know, the rules of 10-4. So you have to make 10 calls, write 10 notes, see 10 homes, and so on. Oh, here we go, the daily 10-4. Uh, by doing this practice, you get used to be on the phone or in front of the people. You don't have any inhibition. And then the more you, you learn about your business, you're more confident when you talk and then people listen to you. So 
following the daily 10-4 is very important because it's going to set you on the right practice as a realtor. It's a discipline, I, can, I call it. Open houses. Okay, I know we don't have that many open houses, but we see the homes are staying a little bit on the market. Go offer the listing agent that you can do an open house for them. I've seen open houses on Thursday, on Friday. Um, you can even sit in a broker tour if the listing agent is busy. Have a communication, have a um, connection with listing agent. Then if they need you, most of listing agent, there would be hustling for the next listing. So have a report with them. And whenever there's an open house, that's your, that's your goal. This is where you get your buyers and sellers, by the way. And we're going to talk about that later. Referrals. Um, uh, 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 you can have friends that they're not ready to buy, but then cultivate from them referrals. Ask them if they know someone that they, they want to sell or want to buy. Ask them to drop your name there. And then you follow up based on, with, the, with the prospect based on the relationship with your friend or with your direct contact. So finding seller leads is going to come as a combination. There is not one thing that you can do and it's going to bring you salary. You have to have a, a little bit of every niche. You have to kind of um, dig, basically. You can do ads. Um, on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, we don't see the ads on Facebook working that much for listing, but again, um, you can also cultivate seller by having your business page on Facebook, talking always about stories, stories about the houses, the houses sold for, was listed for that much, was sold for that much, and it was nice inside. Um, put some stuff about uh, when you see homes, when you preview homes, put small videos. People pay attention to you and you're going to gain more audience. And sellers could really come from that right now. And I maybe I will, um, I will end this session with some ideas. But those are my personal ideas. I don't do one thing. But referral for sure is big. The stats for, uh, from the NAR around 2020, it was 68% people come from I believe uh, from referral as referred from someone else and about 52% comes from past clients. I see 2021, 2022 with the events of COVID, we have a lot of people moving from one area to another. So I say my business 60% was past client. So don't ever forget to keep in touch always with your past client because most of them either they're relocating to another state. So that's the two things, they're selling and buying, or they are uh, looking for a bigger house. They had a condo, they had a townhouse. So I'd say like 60, 65% right now is past clients. And the rest of it, again, is referral. Um, we can do door knock now, but everybody knows an, a realtor unless you don't knock in your neighborhood. So those are little ideas for you to go on. But this is what's working right now. With the events of the COVID, things a little bit changed differently. I would go to the next one. Qualifying and converting the seller leads. So we're going to talk about that. So when you get it, when you get details to add to your database, uh, a lot of times um, uh, you have you have to put a note for yourself to remind you where did you get that lead. It could be an open house at this address, and if you can catch um, uh, their kid's name, where they work, and then put it in your database, it gives you leverage to talk to them as if you know them. Follow them on Facebook. Um, by knowing those people, I'll go back to the open house. When you do an open house, always ask the question, if do you live around the area in the neighborhood? And try to know where they live. And then you can send them a thank you card for visiting later on and keep in touch with them. But also take the time and talk to them as well. If a buyer coming with an agent, you might not be, you know, it's not an 
important time for you. Uh, let them do their thing with their agent, but target neighbors. Neighbors are good. So if you do a twilight tour on Friday and you invite all the neighbors with a door knock, <clears throat> with a door knock um, invitation, they will come to your open house and this is your sellers coming to the open house. Your open house is not only for buyer, it's buyer and seller. So the more details you get about them and you keep in touch, all you need is a name and an address and then the email will come later. If you ask everybody to sign in as per seller request at the open house, then you get their email. <clears throat> of course, if they, if they wrote the right email. Assess their wants and needs and plans. Uh, by talking to them and then getting more casual conversation, it's not about when are you selling. People don't like the pushing right now. People have changed from the COVID. People are more interested to talk about their dogs, about their grandkids. Uh, tackle any conversation to get through to them. And that's when you connect to them. Um, you pinpoint their location, if they would like to buy, do they think, how do they think the market is going? Uh, do you think, do you foresee yourself moving? A lot of people are moving around since the COVID. It's an easy conversation in an open house with a neighbor because a neighbor could be also a renter. It could, so your, your future buyer, or it could be a seller, your future seller. Of course, you need to follow up on all that. And the best thing is, uh, I'm sure you have attended uh, Brian Lee and I've done also uh, kind of a QR signing in in open houses. So you can catch as much information as you can. Sometimes it's first and last name and you go find the title and you know where they live if they wrote their, their first and last name the right way. So there's many ways to get information and you can always start with a small card thanking them for stopping by your open house. Keep an, you know, it would leave an impression. Um, determining their motivation. This is all during a conversation. Get a feel for their timeline. Uh, don't, don't push it, you know, it's like nobody is going to see you and then will trust you. They, you know, you have to earn their trust. Um, assess their expectation. How do they plan to do this? Um, we've had this year a lot of people selling later after they buy. So we do the rent back. So you can you can kind of uh, talk about stories. How do you do a process so they don't stay in, in the limbo or they don't have to move to a temporary location until they buy? So the more, of course, you attend um, all the training and if you attend the insider meeting, we always talk about what are we doing right now what is happening right now. And all this information, it will help you to connect to the people and then using those questions and using your knowledge, that's what is gonna get you to get a real lead. Sorry, I'm talking too much, but I'm trying to cover uh, from my own experience as well, what is going on right now. While following the, uh, the, the slides, okay. Um, you always categorize your seller or you can say also your database. It could be a buyer, it could be a seller. That applies to both of them. If somebody is able and ready and willing to do business within 14 days, I, I've seen that and it happened to me within 14 days. I never believed in 14 days. I believed in 30 days, but it does happen. So you always have to be ready with your action. You always have to follow up. Um, Sometimes they tell you, no, we're not selling. And you turn around, they listed their home with somebody else within three months. But you probably, you did not talk to them because they said in three months. So I would say, have a discipline to follow up all the time. Even if they tell you already between 15 and 60 days, or they tell you within 61 days and more, still follow up. Maybe leave them on a weekly, I would say, not monthly because people are changing their minds lately so quick and you'll be surprised. And then when you lose a deal, you lost the business. 
So I'm not going to go through that because I'm sure you also covered that in the database. So ABC is good to identify and tag your database and comment. And you can even put a description for them. Categorize your seller. And okay, so this is already um, we talked about. I'm going to be skipping all the practice so we can cover everything. And then I have more time so we can discuss what's going on and I can answer your questions. So converting the lead to contact. You ask for appointment, you ask for a referral, and you ask for them to reciprocate the connection you've made. So you're asking for an appointment and that could be uh, valid for an internet lead. Uh, you can get an internet lead basically if you have if you have a listing coming in, you can have a lead from a seller. They want to know, they want to see the house, how you prepare it, apart from a buyer. So you can ask for an appointment. And if somebody is curious uh, to see what you've done uh, in a listing or need some more information, be ready with all your information. Be ready with the guide for the seller. Uh, explain it as a story. Don't just hand them a paper or send them an email, ask for an appointment, tell them I can evaluate your home and I tell you what would could be helping you to maximize your, uh, your, your net, uh, your profit. Um, so asking for an appointment, sometimes they're gonna be ready, sometimes they're not gonna be ready. And you can tell them, okay, no problem if you're not, not ready this week, maybe next week. And if, if you feel they're, they're very busy, so just wait another week and then give a call or text, always be in contact with them. Asking for a referral. I have two people came to me to buy a home 10 years ago and 15 years ago, never bought anything. But I've gone, one of them, I've done uh, two referrals from him and each one, 1 1.8 and 2 million. So that's okay. I appreciate that it became like a friendship kind. And I knew that person is always scared to jump in. And he, he lost on buying 10 years ago, of course. But I would take that person to lunch from time to time to connect on a personal, on a, his work, what's going on with him. And of course, the question come, what's going on with the real estate? And then always there's somebody he knows might be selling or buying. If it happened, it happened. It doesn't happen, doesn't happen. But I always ask for a referral. Even with my past client, I send them an anniversary card and I ask for the referral. I have like a, like a label um, asking them for a referral. So I don't have to even write it. I just label something like round and, and, said, and I put on it, uh, thankful for your referral. If you know anybody who wants to buy or sell, I'm here for you. I'm a phone call away. It's a stamp, so I don't have to write too much on a small card. And I, uh, I put it in the anniversary card, so they see that. So everywhere I go, every card, I, if it's thank you card, I put that asking for a referral. Um, ask them for reciprocate the connection you've made, and that's what you ask your friends as well. Uh, you can ask refer your past client, your friend, your sphere of influence, there's so many ways. I go to the bank, I talk to the banker, I, I ask them, who's your loan office? I go talk to him, give him a notepad, a couple of notepad, a couple of cards. Hey, if you have anyone, we close the deals, we, we cover this area, that area, and if they wanna move around, if you have somebody refinancing and you think they're gonna sell soon. So you can cultivate through bank, um, doctors, res receptionists at the doctor, there's so many ways, just talk to people, just talk to people and enjoy, enjoy your, your job. This is what I say, I enjoy my job and my career by connecting with people. And go to the next one, pre-qualifying the sellers. So when you talk to the seller, let's say you are in an appointment, you have to understand why they wanna sell. I've had people call me three times. They want to sell, but they don't want to do it yet. I keep in touch with them. Understand if, the, are they moving because 
I, I've had the seller, they want to move because they don't like the area. Okay, fine. I work on them to sell their house. Um, a lot of people are, during the COVID, a lot of people had kids. We call them the COVID babies. I've had three clients this year, COVID babies, and tell them, oh, time to leave the townhouse or the condo. Let's find a house. And that's a double deal. So the more you keep in touch with your past client, if they had a baby or you see in their Facebook there's a baby, keep in touch more because guess what? Eventually they want a backyard. They don't want to live in a, in a townhouse with a balcony or in a condo with no balcony. And those are like gold in our business because it's double deal and they know you and they trust you. Position yourself as an expert. The more you know, the more, I don't want to say you read the news. I want to say the more you interact in our insider meeting or the listing, uh, Monday listing with Mark, the more you know inside information. So when people talk to you, oh, we heard this and this going on. Well, the media is always late. So when you talk about what's really happening, you are the expert. You show them that you are the expert because you make them think, oh yeah, it, it is old news. Now I'm giving you the new, new news. And then by showing what you know, you win the listing. Before that, when you go on a listing appointment, you don't only run the CME, go call the pending, find out how many offers they have and try to read between some of them would tell you exactly how much they got. Some of them, they tell you around 10% or at 5%. Some, a lot of listings now they're telling you, yeah, I received only one offer. I received two offers. So that's also sets the expectation of the seller. And then this is how you win the listing. When you're coming in with an information on the pending that is not even closed, that just shows that you know what you're doing. You're not like a Zillow. So that's... Zillow will never tell you it'd be pending or it disappear from the search and done. Zillow or Richmond or any online because we we have a lot of um, uh, techie. They tend to know everything from Zillow and Redfin more than you. And this is the proof. And this is one little thing you do. Look at the pending, make some calls a day before well, or two days before because sometimes the listing agent will not get back to you. Text them. And when you text an agent, this is something I started to do. Put a signature for your text, who you are, your license, which company you work with. And it always helps if you were the rookie of the year or you were number one last month in the office. Uh, it helps also to put something like that. So you right away, you get the attention of the listing agent. Be more professional with your text because the text is it's replacing the email really. So you can do easily a, a signature with a small short two letters and it will type it for you in the text. I will go back here and I said to get the, because it's hard to get the pending information. And that's another way people would tell me, oh, thank you that you said who you are, not just the name from a company. Allow you to price the home to sell for the most amount of money in the shortest time frame by knowing by doing your homework before you go to the listing or the first meeting with the seller, even if they're not ready, you already left an impression by giving them most information. Now, if you walk away and they decided not to, keep in touch with them. It's so easy. You go and get the pending information from the MLS. You put it on a link and then underneath the link, you type the address and you say, they got three offers. They got four offers. Uh, one of them is having an issue with the appraisal. They did not want to give an information. The more you give that information, every Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, listings get pending. We know that. Uh, they come on the market Thursday, Friday. So every Tuesday or Wednesday, make it your day to call. Maybe give them two days until the deposit from the buyer come and then call the listing agent. This information will help you to win the listing. And always tell them how it's breaking the ice with the listing agent saying, I have a client of mine, a repeat client that is considering to um, 
uh, to sell and I'd like to have more information about how is the market right now? What's the, what's the condition right now? And I can say 80% that will tell me exactly what it is. And they will tell me why their house did not come because they had non-permitted, they can you just get a conversation even with the, with the listing agent. It's not your opponent, it's really your team member. That's what's helping you to get your listing. Properly set the seller expectation, allowing you to, to create a great customer experience. And that's exactly it. What we are seeing now, we don't see 20 offers anymore unless it's really underpriced. Uh, you see, if you price it, please price it also transparent. If you have a listing, you have to convince the seller, I'm going to put it transparent so people do not come too low or, or not to come at all because they think you want 200, 300 over. But right now, you're getting a listing of 2.2. You're getting uh, uh, an offer accepted within 100, 150. It's not like crazy like before, again, depending on the area. But my, what, what I've been seeing the last three weeks, I got two buyers in and it was high scale. I would have said if that house was on the market a month ago, they would have gone 300 over. And we went in with 100 over and we won it. So all those changes, nobody's talking about it. Everybody's saying calming down. It is not calming down. It's a different strategy. So a lot of sellers, they don't know where to go. They don't want to sell anymore because of the interest rate, but the interest rate and the prices is settling down. So you still encourage your seller to buy if they're able, of course, to buy and they can handle uh, two, two loans for a short period of time. There's a lot of ways to convince them. Again, listen to stories from, uh, current stories from your colleagues, from the meetings, and that will help you a lot. Okay, pre-listing questionnaire from your electronic toolkit. I'm not gonna go through that. Um, you always, by the, the, more, the, the more you have an appointment uh, with sellers, the more you will create more questions. This is your base. This is, again, this is very good. It's your base. You can change it based on the conversation, based on the situation when you're meeting the seller. Maybe it's on a phone call. Uh, you can ask, a, you know, short question to tell you, to give you a feel of what is this seller expecting? What are their plans? But if you go to them, of course, to me meeting them, you're probably gonna address the same questions again and you get more details on it. So of course, this is a questionnaire. It can help you all the time to, uh, to go to start from it. Role play, okay, I'm not gonna do the role play. Um, Requalifying the sellers, I'm sure you guys uh, have done a lot of uh, classes and a lot of role play. The listing presentation. Here you go, on command, we have a, a ready listing pr presentation. I call it also a CMA uh, on my design. You find it on the design. Um, on command, uh, you always have uh, the ability to make changes to the listing presentation. I uh, remember during the COVID, we had to take down the open houses because we were not allowed to do open houses. And still today, there's a lot of sellers are worried about the open houses um, because they have elderly people in, in the house. So you can add, um, add the open houses and maybe add a note in between two brackets uh, based on agreement with seller, you know, based on seller request that you will do whatever it takes. The listing presentation is very important. This is your presentation and always put uh, a bio about yourself, uh, where you've, even if you're a new agent, where did you work before? A lot of time where you worked before, you can connect with them. A bio is very important. What KW provides uh, what we provide for marketing, um, the more information you can put in the listing presentation, the better. And then put one or two pages with 
sold listings and pending listings and use those pages to discuss what's happening with those homes. So that's also would be uh, discussing more and more during your visit with them. You have to practice the listing presentation. Here we go. Role play, role play with your colleague and that would help. And let your colleague act as if he's really a seller, even, you know, think out of the box and then let them ask you different questions. It's just gonna open your mind and make you ready for any question comes your way. Uh, do I have to admit people? Abigail, I keep getting uh, information to admit. No, ma, I'll okay. do it. Okay, you're doing it. Okay. Oops. Here we go. Oh, finished in half hour. Mamma mia. Okay, we're going to have a lot of time to talk then. Perfect. Okay, so from, from those slides and from briefly what I've explained what's going on, uh, I guess we can start right now. Um, your ahas. Can we open the chat box, uh, Abigail? Yes, it's open now for any okay. questions. Okay, so you guys, you can see all the questions on the screen. Basically, what are you thinking has changed? What I've, what I've tried, I followed the order of the slides. However, I put a little bit more information that is valid with our today status. It is changing ever, every two, three weeks, I think, the market right now. Stock market is affecting, the war is affecting, but I've, I've had somebody calling me, what are you doing is so dead. I said, why is that? You still go to Starbucks and talk to people. You still have your past client. Just cultivate, don't, don't just sit and say it's dead, then it's gonna be really dead. Just find something that will motivate you because you know, if we don't have anything going on, we're not motivated. Work on your database. Uh, work on arranging your uh, your expenses. There's so many things you can do while you're trying to prospect as well. So I'll start with the first question. How has your thinking changed? What ideas or mindset were new for you from what I've said today? Is there anybody on the chat? Um, Hi, me. Uh -huh. Oh, this sorry. is Neha. I, I just wanted to ask, at the open house, you mentioned to scan QR code. Like, do you have an app that you're referring to? How do you do that? Um, there is a free uh, QR code. So you have to prepare a landing page in your comment. And let me see if I can open my comment. If you go on Google and just Google QR code generator, you can copy a web address, plug it in, and it'll spit out a QR code for you. Um, so yeah, if you make a landing page, you can copy the web address of the landing page and, uh, and um, generate a QR code for it. Yes, I will show you, um, I do QR code. Okay, great, I cannot sign in. Thank you, comment. And coming? you'll get email and contact, everything in it, right? Here you go. Yeah, I'll show you my sign-in sheet. I also prepare an electronic flyer because people tend not to take flyers anymore in open houses. Um, I've also done like um, a Google form, but I do know that with the command landing pages, um, our market center tech trainer was saying that it'll automatically put the contacts into command. Exactly. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, it's not on the listing, it's on the consumer. So I'm gonna show you my landing pages. 
So we usually do the ad with the landing page of the property, right? I started to take this URL and go QR, free QR. You just go and find it on Google. Uh, you see this one link I created, I did an ad was coming soon. Maha, we cannot see your screen. Oh, why? Still showing the slides. I think you have to switch the screen to a different display. Oh, that's good. So you didn't see all what I was going around. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. See, this is my landing page, right? I just done that because I have a coming soon. I, I use the landing pages with QR is at the open house, but landing page, I use it also if I want somebody to message me from Facebook. So I go to Facebook itself and I do an ad and I say, message me, right? I tell them DM me and I put a link. It's just so slow. And this is the link. And I let them leave a note. Once they enter all that, I capture their name and their phone number already and I have the information. I got only one uh, of a lead, but I didn't have a good picture on the ad. Very important to have good pictures, but I just wanted to test it. So that's one thing that I do. Okay, now I have this screen on the top. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing where. Mm -mm. Here we go. Go back here. Uh, open house signing. Here we go. So that open house, it's one landing page. I use it to for everyone, okay? And then okay. I create a QR on it. I'm not sure if my QR on this computer. Um, so let's say, uh, let me go back to it again, the open house. That's what I do. I pick up this. It's already created in life. And I'm gonna go on Google. Here we go. I just can take the first one. And then you, it, it shows you where to put it. Okay, accept cookies and then delete later. Here is your QR. So you see Neha? Yeah, I got it, thanks. The, you put that QR, right? So what I do, I create a yeah. small flyer I print, I wish I had one. I print that QR and I and I put a message, as per seller request, please sign in. Because seller wants to know who's coming to the house. Seller doesn't know, but just a way to kind of enforce it. And I put Correct. it in a plastic thing. Don't have it here too. Um, you know, you buy that like a plastic frame where you can put the paper in between and leave yeah. it so anybody coming in, scan it with their phone and they enter their phone. I used to do an iPad, but with the COVID, nobody wants to touch everybody, you know, after everybody an iPad. So this is great for... Um, uh, capturing data. Capturing data. It goes to your, to your command right away. And also I do the landing page if they want to look at the page later on. The landing page, guess what, has my information, my contact information, if they want to show it to their family or their friends. I do a QR for the electronic flyer as well. So I use it a lot. I oh, got it. See? And then you get a notification here that you have someone that... Uh, That's been saw your profile or something. Mm -hmm. So I have it okay. also with sign in here. Now I, I turn it into open sign-in. I used to say COVID-19 sign-in sheet. So I do it as a landing page. I do most of my stuff as a landing page. Whether I make an ad through command or through Facebook, I use that link to give more information when I do landing page about the property, when it's listed. So if somebody 
if you're running an ad, you tell them click for more information. So you take that link as well and put it on your ad. So, and the QR is when you're, when it's at the, um, at the house itself or the property. Um, Got it. Thank you. Okay. Mm, let's see, where do I go again now? New share. Let me share back the slide. What do you feel differently about what was meaningful for you today? Okay, any more questions? I have a question. Yes. So you talked about uh, like, you know, go, when you go to the bank or you go to like the doctor's office, talk to the receptionist, how would you approach a conversation? Like how would you turn it into like a real estate conversation without like, Okay. You know, asking for business. Okay. Um, and so I find, so I find this is, okay, there is a trick to it. Oh, I'm so tired, man. Working all weekend, working everywhere. People will ask you, oh, really? What do you do? Working 27 for. <laughs> 24 seven. I always say that word right away. The question, comes, Oh, really? What do you do? Nurse? I said, I wish I'm, I'm psychiatric. I sell houses. So there is a trick to say something about it. Um, my God, sometime you talk to people at the store and you drop something. I'm so sorry. Just, you know, it, it, it comes automatically from you and people will ask you, uh, you go on mm -hmm. an event. I'm known uh, when I go to events and networking, uh, not even networking. It's like uh, a lot of people, they do outdoor gathering now, family events, friends of a friend. You don't know them. You talk to them and somebody talk uh, about their job. So you ask them, what, what do you do? And they tell you, oh, I work at this bank. Oh, you're so lucky. You work only five days a week. Then the question comes, what do you do? Unlike me, you know, it kind of I things uh -huh. it comes across. I mean, just think out of the box, right? I didn't purpose, okay. I didn't purposely do it, but then I thought of it. I did it twice. I said it twice because of the situation, and it came. But you can't go say, "Hey, my name is Ma. I'm a real estate agent." No, it doesn't work like that. Uh -huh. After right. COVID not after COVID. You have to relate to the people. You have to ask them questions about themselves and them talk about themselves. Eventually, they're going to ask about you. That's what it and is. And like if that, if, that, if that conversation happens, like would you then offer a business card or just leave it at that? Oh, uh, let's meet for lunch, whatever. Okay, you have to tackle it as friendship first. Mm -hmm. Okay, because... You don't know they're going to sell or they're going to buy or they're going to know someone. And if you like the person, I, I'm like, I make friends at the bus stop. I'm like, I, I like to talk to people, but I don't have time too. So if you feel like this person it could be, first of all, do you have to like the person? I don't want to work with somebody I don't like, really. And if you like them, take it as a friend. I went to the nail salon and then I talked to someone and she was so negative about everything in life. Men is this, men is, I'm like, why are you like, you're too young to think this way. Don't waste your time. Blah, blah, blah. We talked like maybe 15 minutes about that. And, uh, and she said, oh my God, you helped me a lot to think different. I'm like, okay, take your number. Let's go for lunch. And then she said, oh, by the way, I heard you're doing real estate. I might have a house to sell with my brother. It came from her because you cannot just go blob that you are a real estate agent. Connect to people. That's just much more lasting. And I think myself, that's much more enjoyable for myself. Like, we are in this job. It's not nine to five, but we are in this job because we like to deal with people not being at a desk, not talking to anyone. And I've, I've made a lot of good friends just on a personal basis from clientele too. Mm -hmm. So the nail salon, yeah, you reminded me, I did that last week. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Thank you. It, it, can, it comes automatically. Okay. Don't think about it too much. Just be yourself as if it's a friend and the question's going to pop up. They're all going to ask. They're going to like you. They're going to be curious. What do you do for a living? 
Or you can say, oh my God, I used to work. I used to work in high tech. Oh my God, I remember those days. Those days were good, were good money. I always say that, which is true because you see the money was no expense. Here you expense and you, then later you see the money. So, so that's another way. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Everybody's quiet today. How will your behavior be different going forward? What action will you? You know, if I look at all that, we have all the tools from comment to do the administrative, administrative stuff. You just have to pick up the phone and call. My past client, I, I went and gave them candles for Christmas, knock on their door. I got six deals out of that because three people were selling and buying. And I put it in their mind. It was January, it was the rates were low. I put it in their mind. Every objection, oh, but it's, it's cheaper here. We're not gonna look now. We have a baby. I'm like, yeah, you have to look now. The baby's not running yet. You're not running around. It's perfect time to look for a house right now. And I got six deals out of that. So connecting by just giving a candle. I still have candles in my trunk. They didn't give everybody because I have a lot of people to tackle. Mother Day last year, I I give um, an orchid to everyone. But this year I couldn't, so I texted every person personally, every mother. So there's a lot of ways to keep connecting and cultivating, and that could be a seller lead, and that goes also buyer leads, really. Even rental. People are, are coming back and they want to look for rent. I will help them as much as I can. I will give them tips. If they're not here, I would show it to them FaceTime. So that's a connecting with a prospect too. And then it could be a buyer, but he could be knowing somebody that is going to sell. So here you go. A seller lead comes this way. You just have to be active. Uh, don't pass one day without connecting with people. I understand sometimes you don't have time to call 10 people, write 10 notes, but make calls, uh, go see people, in the grocery store, talk to people. Uh, a lot of a lot of business right now coming, it's not, it's not coming from the ads anymore, unless you have a listing and people want to know about it. That may be the case, but we see the ads, everybody don't want to talk to you. Everybody is careful when they click about any ads right now because they know you, you, they're going to be hammered with calls. So ads is good for visibility, for people know you, that you do real estate, and uh, your stories as well. Your stories... Even use a story of a colleague that you heard they've done this with a buyer and they end up putting three offers and then they won one offer. They lost one with 10, uh, with 10 offers. So you can talk about a little, a little videos and then you will bring sellers. And that's what I'm saying. Think out of the box. Use the media, social media. Use the reels. Your, use Instagram. There is shorts on YouTube now. You just pick up the phone and say something. I know people, they didn't have any business within a year. They've had like 35 transactions. We're just putting a small videos on YouTube. Not edited, not anything. And you, if you want to tackle the, the, the sellers, just show your knowledge. How much is selling? This one is spending. They've got so many offers and that's all what you say stop like that you see you make them wonder or you give them question what do you think this house went with 10 offers on it make them engage on the on the media on social media with you i don't do this all the time because i don't have that much time but i do from time to time little videos information awareness 
Um, anybody else has different tools that they use it that can share with us? Is there anything in the chat? We're, uh, my team and I are trying uh, golden letters to do the same thing. So that's, that's something that we just started doing. I'm I did, sorry, it did, it did cut and it probably from my internet. I didn't hear the. Uh, Google letters to attract sellers. Uh huh. That's one thing that we and I are working on. Uh, we do, we have a, we, uh, we have a uh, QR code on the letter. I'm just saying, you know, we are not ready for an agent, but if you're wondering how much your property is worth, you know, scan the QR code. And then we've had a lot of people that scan it because they're, maybe they're curious to see how much their property is worth. And then we create a CMA for them and we um, put it in a nice little packet and deliver it to them. And you, what, what do you use the software? You use the software for that, the QR? QR code. But what software do you, oh, you, okay, do you use like CoreLogic? Do you use HomeBot? HomeBot. HomeBot, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is great. And then uh, if you have their email, what's going on with HomeBot now, you can put a small video of yours talking to them too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've done that, but this is very successful right now. We haven't. Uh, I think that's something that we're probably going to try. I'm actually going to try with someone who's not called a couple of times. Uh, email, I call her. She doesn't call back. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm just going to send her a video on a text message because I know it's her cell phone. And then see what happens. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because then you relate to her. You know? mm -hmm. and then, I, but I always say I have to pass by that house and see if they are really there or not renters or not or it's listed it's just i haven't had time but i thought of it and i heard a lot of uh success stories by texting texting a video just not texting writing mm -hmm. and, and then if you don't hear anything a week later you text another hey i didn't hear from you i hope everything is okay just to remind you give me a call whenever you have time something like that mm -hmm. Yeah, HomeBot is very good. It used to be CoreLogic back in the days, but HomeBot, HomeBot is very good. And if, if you want to also do it different than envelopes and letters, uh, you can use the door knock and put it on the door knock. So when they we, open, uh, they see the QR too. We, we've done that too. We've done the door yeah. knocking. Yeah, so I do door knocking, and if they're not there, I just hang it, and I do it in the open house to invite the neighborhood mm -hmm. you know, to come to the to the open house. I try to get the twilight tour for the neighbors, so I have more time with them, because mm -hmm. they will be buyers and their agents and stuff like that, and the realtors. Yeah. Any other ideas? Almost done with it, but... I'm going to be actually talking in an insider meeting on the panel for the open houses more, which is going to come good because I'm going to be doing an open house this weekend for my new listing. And let's see how is that going on. I haven't had too many open houses this year. Sometimes it's just selling before doing an open house. And that's another thing too with listings. I you have to set the expectation for the seller that they have to be open for preemptive offers. Before, it was not a choice. We all had to wait. But right now, when there is a possibility to get one or two offers, you want to open it from preemptive. Then you're going to see maybe four offers because everybody wants to come before the deadline. So you put the deadline and you say, open for preemptive offers. And it's a good for a buyer's agent that they have a buyer that did not lock them in anywhere. And you set the expectation for the seller is not going too high, depending again on the area. Um, I, I went on to, I put an offer in Redwood City, but the guy really put the house 
1.8 instead of 2.1. And I think you want 2.3, 2.4 now. But he really underpriced it. So the, those cases, yes, they're going to receive 20 offers. They got 20 offers. But really, from the 20 offer, they're probably going to look at the two, three offer that this is the price they want. So you tell the seller, we price it right, and we might get two, three offers. And whatever work with you, just move it along because the interest is going higher. The buyers are diminishing slowly. They cannot afford it anymore. So that's another way to encourage people to list faster. I mean, use what's going on in the market to your benefit. And at the same time, you're not pushing. You're really telling them the facts. If they tell you, oh, no, we're not going to sell. We're going to wait for it to go up. Well, we don't know if it's going to go up. Uh, when the stock goes down and everybody lost their down payment money. I heard the last two days, people lost a lot of money in the stock market. So, any other questions? Right. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. You just go, you guys are quiet. Are we done then? Then no more questions. Well, I hope you enjoy it. And then please call me or email me with any questions. And you'll see me probably in the insider meeting next week. All Thank right. you for the session today, Maha. It was very, very informative. And I think personally, I feel there's a lot to work on and, and sort of take in. But uh, yeah, I'm so glad I didn't miss today's call. It was, it was a lot of information. Yeah, it's out of the box. It's, uh, it's really what's going on. I mean, take this as a base for sure, because that's the discipline that you need. Any realtor needs the discipline. And I know you lose the discipline as you get busier, but you come back to it, and that's what's going to fill your pipeline beside what's going on in today's market. That's more important. I'm all about what's going on the last two weeks. And then that's just motivate me more in this business, because it's changing. Everything is changing. And you're involved in different stories. That's what I love about it. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. All righty. Have a great day, everyone. And then uh, probably see you on the insider meeting. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.